Hey guys, Tierra here with Doc Girl Fitness, and today's video is all about my five tips for how to survive a night shift at the hospital. So as you all have seen, if you've been following along in my residency journey, I have at least one week of nights for almost every rotation of my intern year of residency. So far, I've picked up a few tips and tricks to help make sure my nights go smoothly. Although I am coming from the perspective of a resident physician, I feel that these tips would also be helpful for any medical students or even PA students who have to complete a few night shifts as a requirement for their clinical rotations. So if you fit into that category, make sure to keep watching this video so your next night shift goes smoothly too. My first tip to make sure that night shift goes by smoothly is to prep yourself a night bag. Your night bag should have all of the essentials, not only to make sure that your job goes well, but also that you are adequately prepared to have a very smooth night. I suggest prepping your bag the day of, or maybe even the day before, and then checking that bag one last time before you go off to your shift. If you're curious as to what I think are essentials for a night bag, make sure to watch last week's video where I show you what's in my backpack for any long day shifts or overnight shifts at the hospital. My next tip to you all is to make sure that you're completing those tasks on your to-do list for your night shift immediately as they come. While day shifts tend to be consistently steady throughout the day, with different things popping up here and there all day long, while you're on a night shift, things come and go in batches. So you may have a few hours where nothing is happening and then all at once you may have four or five admissions. You can keep your stress level down during these ebbs and flows of the night if you write down your tasks as soon as they come, immediately complete them, and then check them off one task at a time. This also ensures that no matter how busy the night gets, you don't forget to complete any of the tasks that you need to before your shift is over. All right guys, so my next tip to you all is to learn your patience. During the night shift, you usually are the only intern available to take new admissions as they come. But in addition to those new admissions, you also are usually given a required set of patients that you're going to be covering over the night. You may not know these patients very well because during the day, your cap number of patients that you are required to take care of could be smaller or they could just be entirely different patients versus during the nighttime, you could be required to care for an entire team of patients. Although you will be given some form of a handoff or a sign out from the day team whenever you come into your night shift, it usually is just enough to make sure you understand what tasks you have to do for each patient. But what if something grave happens to the patient overnight and you are the only one available to make an acute medical decision or you have to be the one to transfer a patient to another team and explain to that team why they need to be transferred and what all is involved in their medical history. For those reasons, it's very important that you take whatever time you have to learn a little bit more about the patients that you're covering over the night. Now, if you're covering a rotation overnight that tends to have more admissions, then it's going to be a little bit harder to take time out of that night shift to learn your patients. But I do still suggest that with whatever downtime you have, you try to learn the patients on your list in order of the patients who are least medically stable to those who are most medically stable. That way, you can at least see the patients who are least medically stable at first, and if you don't have any time left over, you at least know which patients you may have to make some kind of major medical decision for if they crash or if something happens that requires an immediate decision from somebody who knows their medical care. It's also helpful if one of those patients ends up needing to be transferred to a different medical team that can provide a higher acuity of care because they usually would like to know a little bit about the patient. If you look up their medical history before talking to this team, then you'll feel a lot more comfortable conveying that information to them. My next tip on the list is to check in on everyone before going to sleep. So if you're on a night shift that's slower than some of your other rotations and you will have an opportunity to fall asleep at night, I highly suggest that before you fall asleep, you take a look at your patient list for all the patients you're supposed to be taking care of. And I personally would walk around to each of those rooms and check in with them. Now checking in with them does not mean doing a full physical exam and talking to each patient on your list before you go to sleep. And it doesn't even necessarily mean laying eyes on the patients before you fall asleep but it doesn't hurt to at least walk by their room, 
find whoever their nurse is, check in with those nurses and see if they have any concerns or if they would like to talk to you about anything dealing with that patient. And also, don't forget to write down that nurse's pager number and to give them your pager number. That way, these nurses who are going to be spending a lot of time around these patients throughout the night feel empowered to contact you and let you know if there's any questions or concerns that come up throughout the night. Okay, we've reached my fifth and final tip for how to survive a night shift at the hospital, and that is to set alarms. So whenever you're on a night shift, you're usually going to be given a pager and maybe even in addition to that, you'll be given some kind of cell phone or some kind of way to communicate with any part of the hospital. But I also encourage you all to set your own alarms on your own cell phones that will go off at least one hour to one and a half hours before your night shift ends. Now this may mean that you miss out on about an additional hour to an hour and a half of sleep, but I still suggest that you set the alarm because it allows you to prepare for your sign out to the day team. You can use this time to go back through your checklist and make sure that everything is completed. You may want to do one last check-in with all of the nurses to make sure there's no other questions or concerns that they want you to sign out to the day team. And then you can also use this time to update any kind of handoff that you may have to type up to allow you to efficiently transition the care of the patient from you to the people who are going to be taking care of these patients during the day. And that's pretty much it guys. Those are my five top tips for how to survive a night shift while working in the hospital. Have you already worked a night shift? What are the different things that you did to make sure that you survived the night? Make sure to let me know in the comment section below. In the meantime, if you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions or just want to chat, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. And if you like videos about medicine, lifestyle, and fitness, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.